I want to thank everyone for joining the Protect Against Ransomware with Veeam version 11 webinar. I'm Louis, part of the business development team here at Assurance IT, and uh, I have the honor of hosting this webinar. I'm uh, glad we have a full house today. Uh, kudos to our marketing team and the folks at getting the people out. Uh, like I said in the comment section, I encourage you to keep this uh, alive, ask questions, you know, stay engaged. This is uh, this is going to be, you know, hopefully a, a very informative and, and uh, great session for everybody. Next slide, please. That's my cue. That's right. So let's uh, do a quick agenda overview. Um, today you're going to hear from two industry experts, Ernesto with Assurance IT and Justin from Veeam, uh, probably two of the top individuals you, you want to talk to when it comes to Veeam and, and disaster recovery and, and all the solutions that we have to offer. But we also have some great prizes. For everyone attending this webinar live, you will receive a $10 Canadian Uber Eats gift card from Assurance IT and Veeam. Maybe get a quick coffee or sandwich on us. Uh, for the chance to win the 250 Canadian Amazon gift card, we do ask that you stay with us until the end of the event uh, for further instructions. So uh, that's kind of you know letting you guys know about the prizes. Uh, today you're going to learn about Assurance IT. You're going to learn about Veeam ransomware, the impact it can have on your business, and how you can protect your organization against cybercrime. Before we get into the presentation, I just want to take care of some housekeeping items here. So everyone's on mute. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat. We have uh, a few folks from the Assurance IT team on the line. We'll be monitoring those questions throughout the presentation. We'll get them to the speakers, and we'll also have a question and answer period at the end of the presentation. All right, so let's dive in. Next slide. So let's face the facts, ladies and gentlemen. Most enterprises are not ready for a cyber attack. I think we're all aware the topic of cybersecurity kind of crept up into our lives over the last few years, and more so over the last 18 months and is now a very serious problem for a lot of organizations. One day, no one was talking about it, and the next day, a business is getting attacked every 11 seconds. No matter how big or small the organization, recent world events are testing individuals' limits when it comes to online safety. Criminals are more sophisticated than ever, and they're proliferating online at scale. No longer are the days where these low-level thieves are planning elaborate bank robberies, these thieves today are stealing at scale from the comfort of their own home. So today we're going to focus on ransomware, what it is, a little history about it, and how Veeam version 11 and Assurance IT can protect your organization. Next slide, please. So many of you are familiar with Veeam. I'm pretty sure of that. Most people know that Veeam is famous for their backup and replication solutions, world leading solutions I may add. And Assurance IT is one of Veeam's first Veeam Cloud Connect service providers here in Canada, helping organizations back up their data both on-prem and off-site offline. But that's not all we do. Assurance IT, we are the business continuity experts. This means that we are dedicated to helping organizations secure their data and ultimately their business from cybercrime. We leverage our expertise and industry unique EPR methodology to determine your enterprise's vulnerabilities and how we can strengthen the cybersecurity strategy. The EPR methodology represents educate, protect, and recover. We assess your organizations every, against every pillar and determine where you need to strengthen your business against cybercrime. We help solidify your strategy by applying these methods and solutions. It's a proven methodology that will protect your business. Today, we're going to focus on the P, or the protect of the EPR methodology, protecting that precious data within your organization. I'll pass the mic over to Ernesto and Justin from Veeam, and they'll go into more detail about ransomware and the latest version of Veeam. Excellent, a great introduction, Luigi, thank you. So I'm gonna be kicking it off here uh, with the impact of ransomware, and, and the line that I really, really enjoy is, it's not if, but when. Right, um, these are serious attacks, it's serious threats. We hear them in the news on a regular basis, right? A lot of organizations are getting impacted by ransomware. I'm just gonna fix the slide deck here on my end. There we go. So really uh, to set expectations, right? IT, for, for, all, the, for all the administrators, um, IT managers, directors, CTOs on the line, right? I'm going to set expectations with this statement, right? And I think it's something we live by 
in, in the IT space, right? Is IT is expected to keep data 100% safe from ransomware and any other internal or external threats, right? Have you heard of anything about a company having to pay ransomware to get their data back? To be protected from these attacks, historically, customers will put data on tape, send it to an offsite location that is disconnected from the network and from ransomware, mal malware, and malicious actors. But with time, right, growing popularity of cloud storage, customers are now moving from tape to a digital strategy. Right, leveraging cloud-based storage and disaster recovery solutions. Due to the shift, right, customers need to create immutable backup copies when storing their data offsite or offline. This means that the data can be can be locked or encrypted, similar to the tape solution that was, you know, that the industry understands and knows, and really protected against those ransomware threats. So having the same criteria. So how do we do that? And and that's what we'll jump into and later demo uh, with Veeam version 11. So first, uh, let's get a look at a case study, the city of Baltimore, right? This is one of the uh, use cases that were identified by Veeam, uh, and we'll go through their, their experience, right? Their event. In 2018, this in 2018, again, this was one of the, the largest attacks, ransomware attacks, and it was a $76,000 ransom that was asked by the city of Baltimore. They refused to pay, right? What happened? It ended up costing them $10 million in new infrastructure, IT support, procurement, etc. right? So $10 million price tag. And then another $8 million, which represented loss of revenue. The city not being able to accept online Online payments for traffic tickets, utilities, etc. Total cost, 18 million for this specific use case, right? There's others. If we look at the cost, and they're rising, right? The, 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 the cost of a Bitcoin is not the same today as it was in 2018, right? So we see those ransomware uh, costs on the rise. As we mentioned in 2018, that was one of the biggest ones. Going forward, you see it's growing exponentially. So we need to protect and, and be ready to protect against uh, ransomware attacks. So how do we do it, right? The steps to keep us protected. Hopefully I haven't scared you too much so far, but let's look at both proactive and reactive ways where we can position our organizations against ransomware attacks. Question, the question to all is how do we do it, right? While I talk to these points, where does your organization fall short or don't they, right? Think about it. Some questions we need to ask ourselves. So at a high level, again, at a very high level, these are five key points that we can leverage in order to protect against ransomware attacks and keep our organizations protected. Number one and two, they go hand in hand, right? Keep all software up to date, perform threat analysis with your security team. So I work with a lot of organizations, small to large, across the spectrum, across Canada, really. And, and we see that large organizations have their security teams, right? They have their security teams to put together those policies, put together those um, policies and procedures in order to protect against having your software up to date. But then when we look at the small, mid-sized businesses, right, those teams typically, those, those use cases or those uh, tasks fall on to the IT managers and the IT directors. And time is, is typically the issue, right? We don't have time to, to be proactive. So how do we do that, right? How do we, how do we implement a strategy where we back up our servers on a, on a quarterly basis, on a yearly basis, every six months, right? How do, we fo how do we work together in order to get those security threats enabled, right? Servers, endpoints, right, devices, critical patches, how are those handled, right? So those are the questions we need to ask ourselves when putting together a strategy to protect against ransomware. Point number two, perform a threat analysis with your security team, right? Um, not only external, but internal, right? We know and studies show that 90% of ransomware attacks come within. 
It's key, your users, either clicking on an email or clicking on a link that encrypts data internally and spreads across your organization. So those threat analysis are very important because we might think we are protected, but we need to know if we are protected from the outside and those external threats. So point number two, key. Point number three, train staff on cybersecurity practices. Again, 90% of the security threats come from within. And when I say train staff, is it IT staff or end users? Well, the answer is both, right? One of the use cases we had with one of our customers was um, we ran a phishing exercise where we integrated with their Office 365 and we were able to send phishing exercises to all their users, right? What happened? If a user did click on one of the links, well, they were redirected to an education, a course that needed to be taken by a, term, a certain time frame in order to be certified. So those are one of, the, one of the ways Assurance IT works with its customers, really to educate their users and their IT staff. Point number four, well, like point number one and two, point number four and five go hand in hand, right? Back up your everything at least once a day. Again, high level point, and send a backup copy off-site. So backing up your data once, once a day to an on-site repository is key, right? At least you get your data off your primary storage, right? But then we ask ourselves the question, RTO versus RPO, recovery time objective, recovery point objective, right? Having everything backed up at least once a day gives you that RPO of 24 hours where you can recover from the last night's backup. Right. But if your organization has greater needs, right, if your organization has an RPO of 15 minutes or 30 minutes, depending if they're transacting or uh, depending if they have mission critical applications, those are P RTO RPOs can be shortened with Beam's backup and replication technology, specifically replication technology, where we can reduce that RTO to 15 minutes. Right. And another key point is recovery time objective, right? Getting your data offsite, uh, the archaic way of getting your data offsite with tape uh, in the event of a disaster in order to recover that data was time consuming, right? You can't really put a, a time indicator on your RTO when you need to recover from tape unless you really test it on a regular, on a regular cadence. Having a digital approach, having that data available offsite and being able to bring it back digitally really enhances your protection against uh, ransomware uh, and malware. So again, sending your copy off-site, protecting once a day, uh, keeping your software up to date, performing threat analysis, and of course, training your staff. Those are the five key points that I would focus on when developing an IT strategy uh, to protect against threats, ransomware, disaster uh, going forward. And, and we've seen you know, implementing one or all of these strategies only makes you better. We'll move on to the next slide. So, the three to one rule, right? A lot of you have already seen it. I leverage this really on every every slide deck when I when I'm presenting to customers because it's key. This is again your your master document on how to protect, right? three copies of your data, two on different medias, one which is on site, and the last one, no errors after backup recoverability verification. Not only do we need to worry about backing up the data, but what we really want to do is be able to restore that data, hydrate that data in the, event, in the, in the advent of a disaster or an attack, right? So we need to test it. And those features are built in with Veeam. Those features are built in with Veeam Cloud Connect, as you'll see in the demo that Justin's gonna demonstrate uh, a little later. Uh, it's all built into that single Beam backup or replication dashboard. It gives you the ability really to backup locally, offsite, and bring the data back and test it you know, on a regular cadence, which is key to being able to provide your organization as an IT manager, director, uh, CTO, being able to provide that your the recoverability factor, the time it takes to RTO to your business is key, right? And we need to test. We need to test, test, and test. So a pictogram of 
the three to one rule, right? Your first copy, some customers on the phone today, on the line today, are going to hold their data in a hypervisor, whether it be VMware, Hyper-V, the cloud, right? Your first copy of your data is what's in the hypervisor. Second copy of the data gets sent to a repository. Immutable repositories available in version 11 that uh, Justin's going to go through, or Exagrid repositories, which we work hand in hand in, allow you to get that data fast, offsite, and be able to recover in the advent of a disaster. That's your second copy. Then, with the ad with the feature set of Cloud Connect, which is built in, it gives you the ability to create a copy job for those that are comfortable or familiar with Veeam. That copy job moves that data offsite to Assurance IT, which will be your third copy. And that third copy, not only will it be sitting in two different repos, it's going to be offsite and offline. Okay, so now, now, uh, it, it, uh, sorry, excuse me. IT needs to recover the data when needed at the speed the business expects. So imagine having to wait an hour to recover the smallest of the virtual machine. Now imagine how long it would take to recover a really big server. This is the reality for many organizations. They live with this every day using average backup software. Veeam and its features provide you many ways in order to recover uh, against that data and to be able to go online as quickly as possible. Okay, so going forward, I'm going to pass it on to Justin, right? He'll showcase the new features in V11 that will allow you uh, really to take advantage of protecting against ransomware, and he'll demo version 11 and show you how simply and easy it is to connect to AIT Cloud Connect. Perfect, perfect. thank you. All right, let's move on to the next one. There we go. And this one, and there, there you go. go. Perfect. Yep. Yeah. So, like he mentioned, uh, we are going to talk about backup and replication, specifically Veeam 11. Um, that said, not strictly V11 features. There's a lot of cool stuff we've packed in there over the past decade or so. <laughs> so, it'll be kind of a, a mishmash of everything. Um, so, let's dive in. Now, before we go into exactly what we do now, let's go and start off with a little bit of history, just for those that might not be super familiar with Veeam on the call, and don't feel bad if you're not. <laughs> uh, so we were originally founded back in 2006, uh, and we were first released backup and replication in 2008, which is our flagship product. Originally, we started only backing up VMware VMs, and we were able to do that really well. In fact, we we're pretty much the only one that did it properly. Now, from there, we've sort of spread out into everything, so including Hyper-V, Nutanix, or, or AHV, as it's also called, uh, physical workloads, so if you've got some bare metals, we can put an agent on there. Uh, cloud workloads, we have native tools for, for AWS, Azure, Google, um, and even software as a service offerings like Backup for Office 365. So long story short, um, that's just kind of how we've become to be known as the most trusted cloud provider. So, yep, perfect timing. Next slide. So these are just some of our uh, bona fides, if you will. So we're used by 81% of the Fortune 500, 66% of the Global 2000. We've got hundreds of thousands of customers throughout the world with many more coming on each month. Uh, also, we have a very high feedback score. So you may not be familiar with this, but there's something called uh, the NPS index, uh, which is the Net Promoter Score Index, which can range from negative 100 to plus 100. And we're, uh, click through one more time. It's going to pop up in the bottom right. There we go, perfect. <laughs> yeah, so it can range from minus 100 to plus 100. Uh, we're one of the highest rated ones on that scale just due to how much our customers both love the product uh, and also the support that comes along with it. It's really, um, it, it goes and gauges how likely someone is to recommend a, a product or service to somebody else. So as you can see on here, it's got stuff like Netflix. I'm pretty happy with my Netflix, I'll say that. Um, I, I wish they had some more original series, but I'll digress on that. So they, they have a fairly high score too, 68 on there. Uh, we're actually above them. So yeah, long story short, well established in the industry and pretty much universally acc acclaimed for the product in terms of ease of use and you know, it, it just works. <laughs> anyway, uh, next screen. So this, this one I'll go really quickly on because we've already touched on a little bit. Um, it's really just giving a total view of the product offerings from backup and replication for um, also our monitoring products like Veeam One, orchestration tools like the um, uh, availability orchestrator, um, storage level integrations, just, just a lot of stuff. So be it cloud, software as a service, apps, virtual, physical, we've got pretty much everything. I should have mentioned Kubernetes because that's the brand new one too. <laughs> I guess they're adding apps into this. Oh God, we're adding everything too fast. Anyway, so no matter what you got, we got you covered. 
So let's dive into the actual thrust of this. Customer challenges in 2021. Oh God, it feels like I was saying customer challenges in 2020, 2010. Uh, time keeps on slipping. Either way, well, let's dive into the, the modern issue. Well, let's discuss what's going on here. So first and foremost, it's just zero tolerance for downtime and data loss. Uh, we've added lots of new features to make sure that you're as close to 100% up of the time as possible. Mm -hmm. Next one, keeping backup data safe from ransomware, sort of the, the thrust of this webinar. Huge start that's on the rise. We've already talked about that a little bit, so I'll kind of leave it at that. Also, meeting compliance and retention goals. People are being required to keep data longer and longer in order to be compliant now, be it a industry standard, government standard, maybe you know higher level corporation standard that they're putting on their subsidiaries. Just a lot of reasons you got to start keeping this stuff longer. Uh, recovery despite storage and staff constraints. I think everyone's experienced some sort of staffing constraints in the past year, so I don't need to elaborate on that. Uh, just giving you more options on how you can get your data back as quickly as possible and having to loop in as few as people needed to you know, be able to do that. And last but not least, something we're also probably pretty familiar with, uh, protecting company data now that it's at home. Before the challenge used to be just kind of like robos, you know, like remote offices. Now you got thousands of them within your company because everyone's at home, they got their own little office. It's just, it's created its own challenges uh, and it's a uniquely 2020, 2021 type of thing here. So uh, next slide. Long story short, uh, it's time to expect more from your protection platform. And we believe that Veeam is the proper platform to address all of these needs. Now, next one. So for those that might not have seen the latest update, um, it's an all encompassing four in one solution now. So we combine storage snapshots, traditional backups, replication routines, and now also CDP, uh, continuous data protection, all into one product. So it's just a comprehensive solution. Now, for those that are familiar with the product, uh, we've also added over 150 little enhancements there. Um, could go into that for hours and hours on end, but yeah, just know if you've used the product in the past, there's even more cool stuff. So from here, this, this sort of ties into the customer challenges point by point. So the first one, to address the zero tolerance for downtime, we do have the CDP capability. I will have some caveats here. It is specific to VMware environments and things like that, but basically it's this great new feature. So if you wanna go through and roll back your data, you know, five, 10, 20 seconds ago when some sort of adverse scenario occurs as opposed to having to go back 15, 30, 60, two hours ago, whatever it may be, it's a much faster level of recovery because we're just journaling all the little IO that's happening between the VM and the host itself and, and be able to keep track of that as opposed to doing sort of a, a classic snapshot based replication. Next one, again, the, the thrust of this entire um, entire webinar, ransomware protection. Immutable backups. Uh, I'm not going to go into this too much now because we have a dedicated slide, but this is one of the biggest things in V11 from my perspective because it's something everybody can use. Third one, uh, well, eh, compliancy. It's kind of boring, but hey, you got to be compliant. So one of the ways to go through and be compliant um, as opposed to just purchasing a bunch of hard drives and building them out and building them out and buying more, leveraging stuff like uh, you know Glacier or Azure Archive. We can now go through and instead of just landing in S3 or Blob, we can take your long-term backups like your weeklies, monthlies, and yearlies, and we can keep those for however many years you need in something incredibly cheap and deep. So it just makes it a bit easier on the compliance side because instead of spending hundreds and thousands, you know, every every year to purchase more local storage, you can do it for fractions of a penny and let someone else do it all for you. Fourth one uh, ties into the recovery options, uh, but we've improved our instant recovery routines. So if you're familiar with those, they're even better. And we've also added some new ones like, you know, instant recovery for SQL databases and stuff like that. And last but not least, uh, again, sort of the theme. Veeam powered backup as a service and disaster recovery as a service to help protect your data no matter where it is in the office, at home, in the cloud, wherever. We, we've got you covered. Um, and we'll also touch on this in the next slide. So I'm not going to go too, too much into it, but yeah. So next one. Let's just uh, circle back to the main theme again, ransomware and how to protect yourself. Uh, the best thing you could do right now is have an immutable repo uh, if you're worried about your data being encrypted or maliciously deleted. Um, and the reason for that is, ironically enough, once we've written that data to an immutable repo, even we can't touch it. Never mind ransomware. <laughs> it's, you've gone through and said, hey, I'm going to keep this data for X amount of time and it's going to be there no matter what. 
So previous to immutable backups, um, basically the only surefire way of having safely air gap data was to have a worm tape. Uh, and that's probably gonna date some people. So uh, worm tape meaning write once, read many. So basically I write to this tape and I can't go through and write it again. It's just like if you print a book, it, you can't really touch the, the printed lines on the paper, you know? Um, so now we have that type of capability, but you can do it with a hardened Linux repo. So we go through, we write the backup to it, and then we set a flag that says, okay, this is going to be set in stone for X number of days, be a week, two weeks, a month, whatever you need for a time period. Um, just so that you have that peace of mind that your backup will always be safe from programmatic attack vectors. Now, I do need to emphasize programmatic attack vectors like viruses and things like that. Uh, there's not a whole lot we can do to protect your backups if somebody walks into the building, pours a gallon of water on it, or just grabs your repository and runs off. That's a different type of security you need to address. Uh, but this is to stop any sort of virus from self-propagating and encrypting all of your stuff because they can't write to it. Uh, next one. So let's talk about backup, um, excuse me, Veeam powered backup and disaster recovery as a service. Now, when you backup anything with Veeam, we're putting that into a proprietary backup format that we can read from any Veeam server. It doesn't matter if it's the server that you originally backed it up from. Heck, doesn't even matter if it's a free community server edition. Um, so, or even the extract utility. We can go through and read that backup no matter what. It's just fully portable as long as you got the encryption key, little asterisk there. If you encrypt your backups, you're gonna need to remember that key. <laughs> Otherwise, there's not a whole lot we can do. Um, so basically, you can go and restore that to any host you have credentials to, and you got some free compute. So that could be in your environment. It could be a backup you've sent to Assurance IT. Um, they can go and import that for you and do what you need to do. Either pull it all back up, send you documents, send you emails. Um, and, and this goes for virtual machines, physical machines. Anything you've got backed up, we can go and port, portable, excuse me, port that data around from one place to another and restore it. And the last one, let's go through um, one other note. It's sort of an extra layer of protection that we get when we use our Cloud Connect servers, um, and you can turn this on. It's, it's an option. It's called insider protection. Uh, what it means is that any backup that you have and has been told to be deleted doesn't actually get deleted for X number of days. Now, primarily that's in three different scenarios. First and foremost, and sort of not a bad one, it's just no longer within the retention period. I wanna store my backup for 14 days, it's gonna go bye-bye after 14 days, no harm, no foul. Uh, there's also other ones, accidental, maybe I go, I don't think I need this anymore, let's, let's delete it. And then I go, oh shoot, three days later, I shouldn't have deleted that, I needed that certain thing. And unfortunately, the one that sort of ties back into this uh, malicious deletion, be it a, a rogue employee, some sort of ransomware strain, whatever it may be. Um, when you have this on, this will go through and protect it because it just moves that backup out of your repo into a, what, effectively as a global recycling bin. It's just another folder on the repo, but it starts a countdown timer until the true delete occurs. So it gives you a broader window of time to be able to recover that data, even if you didn't know something happened to it. And this is sort of a good segue into the demo itself. So let me get my VM pulled up here and let me see if I can share this out. Hopefully this works. All right, are you guys able to see my screen? Yeah, it looks good. Perfect. So for those that aren't familiar, this is a backup and replication server. This is where you can go through, point towards the VMs and the physical machines you want to protect, point towards your local repos that you want to back them up to. And then you can also go through and add in a service provider. So what I can do is come in here, go in and point towards Assurance IT servers, and they'll give you these login details. So don't worry about that right here, but they'll basically say point towards this DNS name. Um, you do have the option of letting them monitor your uh, machines as well. So that's an option here. And then they're going to provide you with a username and password. So you'll just put that in. And once you've plugged that in and you hit apply, it's going to authenticate against their Cloud Connect. And any resources you've been assigned will automatically show up here. So you don't even have to add anything in. So if I go into my backup repos, I'm going to see Cloud Connect repo, Cloud Connect Immutable, whatever they end up naming it for you. So you can see what your quota is. You can see how much you've consumed, what your free space is. It's just another repository that you can go and target. So if I wanted to take my data from on-prem and then go send that offsite, what I can do is come under my home tab and I can go and create a backup copy job. Now you could do it for virtual machines. You could do it for Windows and Linux machines, all these different types. I'll just do a VM one for, for sake of argument here. So give it a name. Now there's a couple different ways we can do a backup copy. So do keep this in mind. You can do an immediate copy. So anytime I take a backup and put it on my primary repo, 
I then go through and copy it off. And then so I have a one to one copy. No matter what happens locally, I've got the same granularity offsite. Another thing to keep in mind, and this is something a lot of people do like to do, and they don't, they just don't realize they could do until someone tells them. You can do a periodic copy. So maybe I'm doing hourlies on prem. I don't really want to have every hour worth of backups offsite. That's a lot more data, more granularity than I need. For my backups offsite, maybe I just want to fall back to where I was yesterday. So what I'm going to do here is maybe just once a day, every day at midnight, I'm just going to go through and copy the lays and grays version of everything over there. So I'm not doing a one to one sync, but I'm still getting a fallback point for yesterday or, or whenever you end up timing this. So it doesn't have to be a one to one. Keep that in mind because you can save some space and also not retain stuff you don't need to. So I'll just do the immediate one because that'll be a couple less clicks. So you can come in here and you can point towards jobs. So say I want to get all the um, all the machines from this job sent over there. And then when you pick your repo, you just pick the Cloud Connect repo. That's all you got to do. It's just a normal Veeam repository. So if you've ever set up one of these uh, normal Veeam jobs in your lab, that's all you're doing is just picking the Veeam Cloud Connect. Then from there, you can say how many days you want to keep. Um, and you can also even do GFS. Um, if you're not familiar with GFS stands for, grandfather, father, son, it just means I want to keep a number of weeklies, monthlies, yearlies. So if you have some long-term compliance, maybe I keep seven days worth of daily backups. And then maybe I do a month's worth of weeklies, a year's worth of monthlies, and then you know maybe 10 years, maybe you get some really crazy requirements, 10 years worth of yearlies. So what that'll do is, Every Sunday, we'll create a weekly backup. The first of every month, we'll create a monthly backup. And the first January of every year, we'll create a yearly backup. And we'll just age them accordingly. So a weekly will become a yearly, excuse me, a weekly will become a monthly, a monthly will become a yearly. And it's just a good way to do longer term retention to check that box to prove that you're compliant without having to do daily backups for every day for the better part of 10 years, you know? Um, so yeah, they'll go through, send all the data over there for you. And then if you want to go and get it back, instead of going to your local disk backups, you just come here under your cloud backups and you can do right click recoveries. So you can do VM recoveries, volume restores, granular restores. You can even create recovery media if you need to from here. Um, all the stuff you can do uh, with the exception of two things. An instant VM recovery would need to be initiated on Assurance IT's um, side of the equation um, or a restore into EC2 and Azure because uh, it's going to need some credentials and a setup environment and stuff. But if you just need to pull your data back, you can grab the entire VM, you can grab a full Folder, a file, an email, whatever it may be, you can get that nice and quick without having to pull all that data down. Also, if you're looking into doing full-blown disaster recovery as a service, we have replication routines. Now, if you're not familiar with what replication is in the Veeam context, let me give you a quick 30-second rundown. So if I've got production host A with a bunch of VMs on there, I can go and replicate that to host B. Now that could be my own environment, it could be an assurance IT's environment. It's really just another host where we're creating a warm standby powered off VM. So on a set schedule, we're gonna go through and keep that guy up to date. So that's, that's what I'm gonna set up right now. So I give it a name. I say, I wanna replicate these particular virtual machines. I wanna send them over here and this will fill in for you when you're signed up with them. So it'll say, I wanna go over to their infrastructure. I wanna land it on their data store. Um, you can put in a suffix if you want, and then you can say how many points in time you want to keep. So maybe I want to do this every hour and I want to go back 12 hours just to be safe. So every hour for the past 12 hours, I'll have a checkpoint in time. So if anything happens, I can just fail over and run over there as I was an hour ago. So very minimal data loss. Uh, from here, here's how we go through and transfer it. Just leave that automatic. We also have something called um, application where processing. So if I'm backing up something like AD, Exchange, SharePoint, SQL, Oracle, anything that's VSS aware, um, we have application item restores for those, just kind of an FYI. You can even turn that on for your replicas above and beyond your, your backups. It'll just make sure that they're at rest and transactionally consistent when we do it. So you can do point in time restores for the applications themselves, not having to roll back the entire VM. So if I want to go grab a couple of emails, I don't need to restore the entire mail server. I'll just pull back the emails themselves, go about my day. And then from here, it's just when you want it to run daily, periodically. That's all you really got to do is say how often you want it to send over there. Now, once it's over there, it's really just a powered off VM. It, it's fully hydrated. It's just sitting there waiting to be powered on. So you can come under here under ready. So excuse me, replicas, and then show you the ones that are ready. Now you can do partial failovers. So I just want to fail over a single VM and I just want to fail it over now. This was not planned. I did not know this was going to occur. I just want to spin up over there and log in and keep working. You can also pick a point in time in the past. Maybe maybe it was an unplanned failover, but you got crypto or something and you know you're good three hours ago. That's also an option. You can pick a point in time. There's also a planned failover. 
So if I've got like a blizzard coming in and I know my production site is probably going to do go down because the power lines are above ground, they usually go down during blizzards, I can plan a failover. So I, what I'll do is do a full replication routine, send that data over, and then power it on. So it's really like handing the ball from A to B. Now, what happens if my, my entire host just blows up? We have the ability to create a failover plan, which is saying, I want to go through and boot up my VMs in this particular order. VM1, because that's the most critical, wait three minutes. VM2, wait two minutes. VM3, four, five, et cetera, so on and so forth. It just plans for how you go through and fail everything over, just so you're not meeting you know, any interdependencies not being met. You're not having any race conditions where certain machines are booting up too fast and the ones that are dependent on aren't there yet. It just makes it a very great will fail over. So you'll go through, you'll log into your servers over there. And when you're ready to come back up and run, you can fail back to production. And what that does is it takes all the changes that have occurred on the DR side and only sends those back. So you don't send your entire VM and then send the entire VM back. You just send your entire VM. Then you push over the, um, the, the, the delta essentially. So the increments every time you run the replication routine. Same thing on the way back. We're not gonna pull the entire VM back. We're just gonna pull back which change. So we're just gonna create a delta file and sync that back and then just merges it on your production VM. You boot it up and you continue working as if nothing happened. One other thing I'll make note before we finish, because people don't realize this, you can also source your, um, your files and folders and application items from these replicas. So maybe I do nightly backups at midnight and then I do replicas throughout the day. What if I log in at 9 a.m., start working on the document and then I accidentally delete it or you know do something, something bad happens and I lose that document. I didn't have that for my backup last night but one of my replicas probably caught it, so I can go through and pull that back from the replica. So there is a latent benefit above and beyond the DR capabilities from these. You can source data from them as well. So that's that's pretty much it. I mean, it, it's really just going through, authenticating, setting up your jobs to get the data over there, and then forgetting about it. Ideally, you'll never need to get that data back because everything's perfectly fine in your environment. Just know if something does occur, you have a fail-safe method of getting either your data back or just failing over based upon what type of services you've signed up for. And that's that, that's pretty much it. That's that's all I've got for that. So with that, I'll I'll pass it back. Very good, very good, Justin. Thank you, thank you for that, um, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, before we continue, uh, we encourage questions to come in if you don't mind, uh, or if you have some specific questions. We've got some, as you as you can tell, some experts on the phone here. Uh, I, I did get a question. Uh, privately, and I'll throw it out there, guys. Before we do that, though, um, as promised, we do have a um, a prize to give away. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll let everyone know how they can do that, and then we'll get into the questions. So what we're asking is if you can fill in the survey um, that I'm about to put in our chat room here. So go and fill out the survey while we answer the questions. It'll take you a couple minutes, not more than that. Um, and then our team, we were hoping to do the giveaway live today, but with the amount of people on the phone, unfortunately, we'll, we'll be sending it by email. Um, we will be announcing our, we'll be announcing the winner on our Assurance IT LinkedIn page, which is right here as well. So if you don't get an email, you can also check our LinkedIn group. We will be announcing the, my marketing team has told us that by tomorrow we will have the winner announced. So by filling in the survey, that gets you a drawing into the into the into the gift card giveaway. All right. If you have any questions, of course, throw them in the chat. Uh, Ernesto, Justin, I do have a question here that came in. Actually, two questions. Is there any speed limitation to Cloud Connect backup? Right. So so I'll take that um, as being a service provider. Right. So. If you were to connect, and as Justin demoed um, earlier, if you were to connect, there, there's two types of two types of repositories uh, a service provider could provide: a Cloud Connect backup repository or a Cloud Connect replication uh, endpoint. Right. So when it comes to sending your data to Assurance IT, the only limitation on speed is really the limiting factor would be your internet or the customer's internet pipe uh, upload speeds. Uh, we can guarantee that our our upload speed, our download speeds are are able are adequate to to, to be able to to take in any tenant sending their data to Assurance IT. So, and again, one of the other things that we need to take into consideration is when you're sending that data, right? So, with, built within Veeam, there are capabilities where you can 
as Justin said, you can send them near or you can send them periodically, right? And if you do send them periodically and you want to send that data throughout the day or during business hours, there's there's also ways you can throttle that threshold that uh, for your copy backups being sent over the internet. Does that answer the question? Well, it, it did for me. I mean, if, if the person who sent it over, I, I think it did. Thank you. Uh, again, questions are welcome. Uh, I do have another one, uh, Justin or Ernesto. Does Veeam back up physical servers? I'll hand that off to Justin. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we have agents for um, for Windows from like 2008 R2 on up, uh, Linux for all the major flavors. Um, and, and we did just introduce Mac OS. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys have uh, embraced that yet, <laughs> so no pressure if you haven't, but I uh, do know that that would be on the horizon too. So yeah, we, we've got agents for pretty much everything that's physical now. And Very good. I, I went ahead and I put the slide up on the screen. Really, this slide yep. sums it all up, right? So it, it, it is it is a comprehensive solution really across all data platforms, cloud, SaaS, apps, virtual, physical, and all the application layers, uh, on-premise, public cloud, and, and disaster recovery as a service, right? So it really encompasses um, pretty much you know, the entire landscape that, that, that we're seeing with small and mid-sized customers uh, across Canada. Very good, very good. Um, so I don't see any other questions that have come in. Um, so I think we're actually doing really well with time. 45 minutes um, on the nose, that's, that's, that's exactly what we wanted. Good, good, yeah. Yeah, so um, we have the link for the survey. So ladies and gentlemen, I'll repeat that again. Please fill in the survey. That will get you into the draw for the $250 Canadian Amazon gift card. Our marketing team will be going ahead and drawing that and announcing the name of the winner on our LinkedIn group, which I've posted the link in there in the chat as well. And the winner will, of course, receive an email. Um, check your spam or your junk folder. Sometimes that happens. Um, but if you want to find out, you can join our LinkedIn group here. And uh, more than happy to to have you as a as a member of the group as well. We share uh, information on there on, on a regular basis. Keep up to date with what Assurance IT has to offer. Again, um, we uh, we've we've put together this EPR methodology that helps customers protect from cyber crime, cyber attacks. And it's not only about protecting your your data, but it's also about being proactive in your daily business, uh, educating your end users, educating your IT staff, protecting the the valuable asset which is your data. And then, of course, helping you recover in the event of some kind of physical or digital disaster. If we don't have any questions, uh, Justin, I want to thank you. Ernesto, I want to thank you guys for putting yeah. this together. Yeah, um, to the marketing team, did a fantastic job. The Assurance IT team is, is more than happy to take any questions uh, later on. We'll share our coordinates. We'll, you will be receiving a thank you email after this, and uh, we'll take it from there. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Have a everybody. great day, guys. Have Thank you. Bye. Take care.